Okay, so I have all my tomatoes peeled. And actually what I wound up doing was um, bringing them to a boil because they were still pretty frozen on the inside and you definitely don't want a can of frozen tomato. Um, the temperature will not get high enough to kill the pathogens in there that would it uh, you may wind up getting sick in the end so you at the very least you want your produce to be room temperature when you're canning them. So those are nice and thawed out now and I'm going to add a little bit of fresh basil leaves going to go ahead and start adding the tomatoes to the jar. Let's see, I wonder if the label might work better. Now there's plenty of uh, tomato juice in here where I probably don't have to add any extra liquid to this. And I'm going to leave one inch head space to my jars. Okay, now I know I mentioned before about um, whether to pressure can or water bath can. Now, if you are choosing to water bath can and you are using a hybridized tomato, which is very likely if you're buying the tomatoes from the grocery store or um, even a farmer's market or you're growing your own, it may not be um, an heirloom tomato, in which case they are not as acidic as they used to be. So if you are not using an heirloom tomato, you're going to add a little acidity to your jars. You can use uh, acidic acid, you can use um, lemon juice or vinegar, and it would just be a teaspoon per pint, I believe. Now, my tomatoes are an heirloom variety, and I'm pressure canning them, so I'm not gonna worry about adding anything to these jars. Um, so I've got about a half a, an inch head space here, and I'm hand tightening, not finger tight, hand tight. It's a little bit more than a finger tight, but not so much that I'm putting muscle into it. Okay. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit more basil to that jar. So even if I was uh, water bath canning these, because it's a high, um, sorry, because it's an heirloom variety, I know it's probably acidic enough where I wouldn't need to add any extra acidity to them at all. Um, you can water bath can any fruit, anything that has been pickled. Um, well, the tomatoes are fine as long as you add a little bit of acidity to it, like I said. Um, they are considered a, a borderline acidic, uh, I mean, you want to say vegetable, but they are in actuality a fruit. Anything else needs to be pressure canned for it to be safe. Meats, especially. Vegetables that have not been uh, pickled. And tomatoes are fine for pressure canning. If you're making soups or stews, that's great for pressure canning. Did I add more basil? No, I forgot for this one. What you cannot can at all, you should not, is uh, any dairy product, uh, nothing with flour in it, and let's see, no rice, 
no pastas, the rice and the pastas or barley, is because they swell and it can cause the jars to not seal. If they're swelling, they're going to be pushing the top off. So, let me take the top off of my pressure canner here. And now I'm going to start um, heating up the water. I didn't do it before I know I said I was going to, but I'm not going to do it until I start adding the jars to the canner. And like I said, there's only an inch of water in the bottom of my canner here. You'll see the water line marks on the inside of your canner will show you where to fill it to. Okay. In the meantime, I have more tomatoes heating up in the back here that are still completely frozen. They need to thaw. Okay, so um, I have made tomato sauce in marinara and it is delicious, but it takes a really long time and it uses a lot of tomatoes. I really like having just whole tomatoes on hand. Um, it's, it's a great start to like a pasta primavera, um, to any soups you want to make. I'm going to turn the camera off while I finish filling these jars and then I'll show you what to do next.